Hi, I'm Darlene Washington and this is Spiritually Intriguing, the Church Edition. Welcome. We're here today with Pastor Sion Roberts of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana. Pastor? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good. Good, wonderful. Well, what we normally do is get started with our pastor's journey. We like to know how they got to be what, whomever or whatever position they're in. So you, as Pastor Sion Roberts of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, how'd you get there? Um, I started preaching when I was 18, mm -hmm. um, and I was licensed uh, in 1999 on October 17th. Okay. Um, five years later, on October 17th again, 2004, I was ordained, mm -hmm. and a year after that, in November, November the 8th, this church uh, voted me in. Uh, I had to submit my resume, and out of about 50 other pastors or more, um, they went through this process, excuse me, mm -hmm. they let us preach, they let us teach, mm -hmm. um, and there was a committee of people that selected me on November the 8th, and Tuesday night, to be their pastor, and it's been a wonderful journey since then. My grandfather was a pastor here for 34 years, 35 years, yes. and um, there was an interim, a pastor in the interim between the time he passed in 94, Reverend Carlton Davis uh, took the took the head of the church, the pastor of the church in 94, and he took it all the way up until 2004. Okay. And so the church became vacant in 2004. Mm -hmm. 2005, they voted and selected me to be their pastor. All right. Well, that's a well-adorned position. Yes. Yeah, if they had to vote you in, they must have really wanted you. <laughs> Some <laughs> did. <laughs> Okay, well congratulations for, for your arrival. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is get started, and I have a bunch of issues, that's why I have this show, because I just, I got issues with stuff. Okay. Alright, so first thing we're going to talk about is Bill Cosby. Oh my goodness. <sighs> and I still eat pudding too. <laughs> Alright, anyways, um, let's see, are we happy with um, uh, that Bill Cosby's daughter is uh, standing up for him? Or do we think she's like a naive daddy's girl? What do we think about that? Uh, I wouldn't use the word happy. I mean, because happy is an emotion that's predicated on what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm not connected enough to what's happening for me to be happy or not happy. I will say this, that um, it's expected. I mean, mm -hmm. most children are going to take up for their parents until they have concrete evidence of what's being said. So mm -hmm. I don't know if we can take too much stock in her defense. Uh, I don't think either way we can't say he's guilty because she's um, defending him or he's not guilty because because that's what you expect a child to do. You expect a child to come to the defense of their parent right. until they see yeah, something vice concrete. Uh, vice versa. Yeah. Until they see something concrete. Right. Um, evidence that, that would say he, he has done these things. Right. And that's, that's what my thing is. It's like, why do you need 40 years, 50 years, 30 years even, to decide that you're going to announce rape charges. Um, it's not to say it didn't happen, but the credibility and the accessibility to evidence and all of these sorts of things, it doesn't seem to be, you know, fair. Because where is where is all of this, this information that's needed, all of this um, material, materialistic things such as the evidence that we need to have of these particular situations. You know, if I if I feel like I've been drugged or raped, I don't care who the person is. I'm gonna go and get some type of, you know, doctor's examination or treatment or something. I'm gonna do something to to let somebody know that this thing has happened. Now, I understand too being in fear that you know a woman could be like, oh, well, it's Bill Cosby. You know, he's rich. Blah blah. You know, maybe maybe there was some intimidation, but um, I can't believe that those many women would have been so intimidated not to come forward. So, and again, I'm not saying they're all liars. I'm just saying, where's your evidence? You've waited too late. I think now it's for God to judge and to say, I mean, because only he and that person really knows what happened in this particular situation. So my opinion is that they that God will do his, his justice, you know, when when he arrives on the pearly gates or the the hellish gates is gonna, you know, it's gonna be there waiting for him, you know, well, you know what you did, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, otherwise, I don't see it, I don't, I don't think that we should put, you know, all this hatred and stock into calling him monsters and things of this nature, I just don't think that's fair. 
Hey, well, I, you know, I think every person is definitely entitled to their own opinion. I, I find it difficult to say either way, I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, I, I mean, a part of me feels as if it, it has been a while. Mm -hmm. But, again, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. One thing that I've learned as a pastor and, and a United States citizen mm -hmm. is that uh, you really should believe none of what you hear mm -hmm. and half of what you see. Mm -hmm. Because they they have turned, they have learned how to paint pictures. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know what a person's enduring. You don't know if this was threatened to come out earlier, mm -hmm. but you know, the mystique of Bill, we just don't know. Right. And so it's very difficult for me to um, speak emphatically, but like you said, everybody is titled to an opinion. Right. So, um, well, I'm not emphatically on his side. All I'm saying is, the, the way I, I want to see some evidence. I understand. You know, show me some evidence. Don't just sit up here and wait 50 years. You know, way back in, in mm -hmm. you know, what was that? 52, 67, whatever year was, right. you want to pick accordingly. Right. And say, uh, you know, you drugged me and you, you raped me, and I didn't like that. Absolutely. You know, that's all I'm saying. Just. Just give me some evidence, and then I can say, Bill Cosby, my God, what is wrong with you? Let's get him some help. Let's do what's necessary, you know. And then all those women, let's get them some help too. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be done with it, and then I could be happy with it. But don't, don't come at me years and years later and allege. Mm -hmm. So after so many years later, and nothing can be proved, mm -hmm. you know. I just feel like I don't care, you know. And then all these women that keep coming forward, it's like. Oh yeah, yeah. Bill was wanting me too, you know. You know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that that's definitely the case, but that's what it that's what it looks like. It's like, oh, you didn't know? Yeah, he was trying to get me too, you know. And yeah, this is what happened. Okay, have some evidence. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> evidence. That's it. So, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next topic. And I'm sorry. One more thing. As I said, Bill, if you did that, shame. Just shame you. Okay, let's get help. All right, moving on. Um, let's see. Right now, I was looking at something. What was this on? CNN. Barack Obama's talking about how he's still experiencing racism. He and his wife have been mistaken for the help. Oh, well, well, like they're saying, they're like, well, you know, no big deal. This can happen. You know, I'm, I'm an African American. It's probably not an uh, 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 African American man out here that hasn't been mistaken for help if he was at a, a fancy event shame but it's still you know it's the situation so my question is why is race so deeper at the forefront now is it because we have a black president white people some white people are maladjusted um, there's a whole lot of racial tension right now and it just seems to have festered since he got in office what do you think about that uh, I think my answer is a lot deeper than we have time for okay but um I'll, I'll say this, I believe that um, we're getting closer to the truth and that's what the tension is all about. I think that um, Anglo-Saxons and other races have tried to paint us in, in a certain light mm -hmm. and because um, um, your reality will dictate your response and, your, and, and how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. So if we knew that we were who history says we are, mm -hmm. then we would, African Americans would carry themselves in a different way. Mm -hmm. But especially in this uh, Western culture or this European culture, they have painted us to be a certain way. They painted themselves in certain areas that are just not true. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the closer we get as a race of people to understanding who we are, the more tensions arise. Mm -hmm. Because they tell us things that are just not true. We mm -hmm. believe all kind of things and I don't have time to just go into the list of things that they say they did, when really, if you go back in history, no, those were African Americans that, that did those things. I see. And, and so, with, with a black president, with um, African Americans learning the truth, I think all of this is more spiritual than what we believe it to be, and I think it has a lot to do with just the truth coming out, because not, not only do the people not want us to know the truth, but the enemy, he's the father of lies. He doesn't want us to know who we truly are, because then, you know, we start shaping our reality based upon the truth. Yes. That was very well put. Very well put. Very well thought out, too. Um, the only thing um, I think I would um, pay attention to in this situation is, I don't know, I, I feel like people, we are, we're all just people. 
we're we could be one race. You know, the simple fact that you know my blood can save a white person and their blood can save me to me is enough to say kill the racism, kill the hate. That's enough for me. You know, but for other people, it's not. You know, it's so superficial to look at someone and, and hate them just because of their race. Because all the things that a person who is of hatred in, in terms of another race, that they have um, against someone can be found in their own race. So you'll hear them say, oh, black people are lazy. They're no lazy white people. You'll say, black people are stupid. They're no stupid white people. Okay, you'll say black people are murderers and violent. There's no murderers, violent white people. All they do is have babies. Oh, there's not anywhere on earth you can find one white woman with not more than two kids. You know, so it's like anything you find, and even on the black side, you know, if you want to, when they talk about reverse racism, which is not something can totally be explained because when you get to a very technical definition of it, they say it can't happen. But well, black people can not like white people. And that's what they're talking about is reverse racism or when they don't get breaks because a black person got it just because they're black and all that kind of stuff. It, it's not, when, you, when you're disadvantaged, you know, you can't get into it that way. But when you want, if you look at it in terms of just not liking a race just for being who they are, then you, you can. You can, you can see where someone might be coming from when they say reverse racism. But the whole point is black people, we can't say all those horrible things and not look at ourselves and say, oh, we didn't, we, we never killed anyone, so we have no reason to hate, you know, white people. We, we don't have a bunch of babies, so we can't, we can't hate white people. You know, we, we you know, we're, we're so educated, every last single one of us, so and none of us dumb, you know, so you can't, you can't do that. Long story short, I just don't understand racism. I think it's not about race so much as it is about hate. I see it as a hate game. And it's like whomever comes into the picture that can, that they can attach that energy to and get away with it, I think. And I'm saying anyone who is racist, not just white people, but whoever they can attach that energy to, they do it. And in my opinion, the root of racism is deception, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, um, making a person or another race feel less uh, valuable than what they really are. And, and that's, that's, well, let me say in, in, in the sense of African, African Americans or black people, mm -hmm. um, you know, they just really don't teach us who we are. My children, right. uh, I've been through the public school system, my children are in the public school system now. I'm looking at their history books, I'm looking at what they've been taught, um, and even in the church. Mm -hmm. We're not teaching um, the proper history as it relates to who we really are. Yeah, and, and I can appreciate that, and, and, I, and I agree with that, because the way you, you have to look at that history thing, it's like, okay, if it's my opportunity to write history to my benefit, okay, who's not going to take it? It's not to say that if black people were on top then that we wouldn't have written the books to our advantage. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it, it just is what it is. They had the advantage, they took it, they did it. You know, but it still doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it okay. And, it, and, and at some point, which will be sooner than later, they will have to, whomever wrote all these things that weren't true, we're, the, the truth will be dug up, put out there, and it's like in your face. It's like, okay, so what did you say? You know, here's the proof that it didn't go down that way. So, you know, I, that's that's how I see that. But, good Lord, <laughs> can we just get rid of the hate, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, that's how I feel about all of that. So, I got to two of my issues, people. <laughs> that's that's going to do it for um, this, this particular edition of uh, Spiritually Intriguing, the church edition. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.